Hey everybody, I'm Mark and you are watching the Garage Guy 879 channel. Welcome to my home. Anyway, I want to show you a little something I picked up not too long ago. Uh, my enjoyment and fascination with uh, 22LR handguns just it continues. I mean, I've been having a blast with them here for goodness knows how long now and uh, like I've always said before, 22 LR is the most fun round out there. Okay, now this is something a little different for me because I've never owned one of these. I've never owned a product made by Walther before. And uh, this here, what's in this case, rather nice carrying case, is uh, the latest addition to my 22 LR collection. I'm talking about the Walther. PPQ M2 22 and there's the uh, bag it come in. We'll do a quick unboxing here. It's been out for a while. Uh, what it comes with right here, as I'll show you, we have two 10 round magazines, or excuse me, two 12 round magazines. Now, some of these uh, 22 Walther pistols, be careful to look at the uh, product description because some of them only come with 10 round magazines but the M222 comes with 12 round magazines all right uh, also you have a uh, little wrench in here and that's right there that one's for uh, take the uh, cap off the uh, threads on the end of the barrel you can put a can on this and you also have a, uh, let's see, hex wrench in there. And you have another little tool. I'm not quite sure what that's for. It's like a long black rod, little pin. Uh, don't exactly know what that's for there. I'll have to go through the manual and check that out. I'm sure some other videos have that in their description. Also, you have the, uh, the safety lock in here under this part of the case and instructions and everything, uh, manual, whole nine yards. Uh, like I said, this pistol's been out for a little while and you've probably uh, seen other videos on this same model firearm. Now right here, I have my MacMan Reloading uh, magnetic screwdriver and go we'll check it out. Are these magazines aluminum or steel? Hmm. These appear to be steel. Yeah. Of course, there's a second one. Right there. There we go. All right. Now, as you can see, there is no magazine in the well. We have nothing in the chamber. And this is a uh, very nice light rack. Point name, safe direction. Once again, I don't like dry fire and a rim fire handgun, but this is for video purposes. No problem. Reset isn't too bad. And there we have it. All right. Of course, this does not have a magazine uh, disconnect safety on it. It will fire without a magazine. All right. We have uh, the uh, back sights here. Let's see. They're polymer. No, they're steel. There we go. Yeah, that's that's uh, steel right there. Yep. And it's just not the screw holding it in. It's the uh, back sight. That's steel. Let's check the front sight. It's polymer. And, of course, the uh, slide is aluminum. Of course, the control levers on here, the uh, slide stop lever, it is steel. Yep. There are no manual safeties on here. All right. You got the mag release button right here. Of course, it is not ambidextrous. Let me see if I can get the light a little bit better on this. Okay. There we go. Magazine release button right here. Uh, let's see, slide stop lever, of course, like I said, ambidextrous. Uh, you do have a rail for a lighter laser right here. Let's see, you do have front and rear serrations on the slide. 
and there is no manual safety lever on this handgun. Of course, you do have the uh, trigger safety right here, as you might say, Glock style. And this, my friends, is the same exact size of the PPQ M2 and its 9mm counterpart. That's what I like about this. It may weigh two thirds less, or uh, it only may weigh two thirds of what the 9mm version does, but hey, it's 22. It's got a good feel to it. Uh, Hug grips, talon grips, they're not necessary on this unless you really want them. You do have some uh, noticeable uh, finger serrations right there. And it feels good in hand, all right? Uh, let's try and get a uh, sight picture right here. There we go. Yeah, y'all get the gist of it. Uh, I think it's a 3.9 or four four inch barrel not quite sure but anyhow uh as far as the takedown goes there's a lot of other videos about this model firearm i won't uh, bore you to death with it uh but what do you say we go out here my friends and we go right ahead and take first shots with this we'll do another function check all right let's make it happen all right, my friends, I got two 12-round magazines of uh, bulk ammo right here, assorted brands. Let's fire these off and see how they do. All right. Let's make sure. Yeah. All right, good to go. Make sure we're in frame here. All right. And again... You're behind the house shooting into a dirt embankment at a cardboard target. Like I said, this is just a function check. 12 rounds, first shots. Guess what I forgot to do? <laughs> yeah. Not the first time I've done that. Probably won't be the last. Let this be a lesson to you young shooters out there. Don't get in too big of a hurry. All right. Now let's do this. And held, uh, slide held open after the last round. All right. I like this so far. The trigger itself physically feels better, a lot better than the uh, one on the uh, M&P 22C I did a few weeks ago. 12 more rounds, bulk ammo, assorted brands. Huh. Slide held open again after the last round. All right. All right, 12 rounds, CCI stingers right here. All right, uh, 32 grain, hollow points. Let's see how a magazine full of these will function. Where is that magazine? There we go. All right. Put it in here. And what do you say we do this? Last round hold open with the stingers. What do you say we wrap this up? All right, what do you say we go ahead and wrap this up right quick? I'll have a sit down here with you. 
and we'll talk just a minute. All right, uh, first of all, let's talk about the two things that happened during the shooting segment. Of course, the first one, I forgot my ear protection, all right? That happens sometimes, and you don't realize it until after you fired that first shot, but uh, just make sure you have your hearing and eye protection, all right? Uh, you'll be glad you did. And second of all, when I was putting in the magazine, when I was getting ready to fire the CCI Stingers, if you noticed, I kind of hesitated after uh, I slapped the magazine in. The slide went back in the chamber, or uh, went back in the battery on its own and chambered around. Now, I've never seen, you know, the round go off when that happens, but uh, it may do it. Some of you out there may have seen or heard about something like that, but uh, some firearms, if you put the uh, loaded magazine in, of course, this in here is empty. Go ahead and rack the slide back, see if we can recreate this. If you kind of slap it in at a certain angle, like maybe, well, didn't work. Let's try it from the other angle. Instead of back like that, let's probably has to be loaded for that to happen. But uh, when that does happen, you know, just hold that firearm down towards the ground. You know, at least have enough presence of mind to do that. Because who's to say that first round that just got chambered, got slammed in there, won't go off. All right. You can't never be too careful. Uh, I've never heard of that happening with these uh, 22 Rimfire Walthers before. And uh, then again, there's always a first time for everything. So be aware of that, okay? Because as you just saw on the video, it can happen. All right, I got some notes here. All right, uh, went over to slide chambering in the battery, hearing and eye protection. This thing cycled well, no problems. And uh, the bulk ammo I have, uh, the stingers are just a hair longer round. And they run through here with no problems. Uh, the bulk rounds I had, some of them were uh, ball rounds. Some of them were hollow points. And the stingers were hollow points. They ran well, no problems whatsoever. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the trigger. Yeah. Felt much better than the trigger on the... Uh, Smith & Wesson m and 22 Compact. I uploaded a video about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this feels like a full-size firearm. It may not quite have the weight, but it still has the physical feel to it. And the trigger worked just fine on here. And uh, I've got no complaints about that so far. And as I break it in, it'll only get better. All right. And last but not least, spare magazines. When I bought this, I, I bought this at Bud's online. Uh, it was two sixty nine. Well, I figure yeah, twenty two LR. The magazines can't be that expensive. If anything, you know, you might end up paying forty some dollars for a two pack of certain magazines for any given twenty two LR handgun. They only had these, you know, you could buy one at a time, you know, no two packs, just a one pack. It was $36. Well, after the tax and shipping fee was added on, one extra magazine would cost $51. And I'm like, nope, I can hold off on that, okay? Maybe later down the road when I got a little money burning took the hole in my pocket or something like that but right now i'm not going to spend 51 dollars for one magazine not for a 269 dollar rimfire handgun no not happening well anyway uh i hope y'all found this video informative uh, i enjoyed making it for you it's always good to sit here and talk to you and uh hope to catch y'all soon I'm Mark, Garage K879. Catch y'all later.